Hey, fellas. Uh, frequently asked questions. Haven't done this in a while. I hope I'm pronouncing it. Michelle James. I remember she's uh, asking, you know, well, not so much asking, but talking about just not, you know, getting out there and fishing every day and not having much success. And how, how do you become a good fisherman? One thing I'd say, one, I've been fishing all my life, but two, that is not a requirement. You know, I know people who've been fishing all their lives who still don't catch much of anything. There's a process you have to go through. And when I was fishing with dad as a kid, dad always had a boat and we always went out in the boat. And whenever we fished from the bank, we only went to places where there were known good fishing from the bank. Nowadays, gasoline is high, although it has come down in the past couple of years. Still, I can't, can't just run all over the state and stuff fishing because you just don't have the gas money like we used to. And uh, so there's all that stuff I learned as a kid, but then when I got into high school, my brother, uh, started teaching me about bass fishing. He, he got me in the lures. I bought my first rod and reel then. I cut, you know, was cutting grass and bought my, bought one of those quantum reels and a quantum rod. And all we ever fished was like red worms, you know. Down there on the Alabama River in Selma, Alabama, that's where I'm from. If you've seen the movie Selma, that's my hometown. So I learned that fish relate to structure because there was a stump or something out there and some rocks out there and we would fish around that structure, sometimes get hung up and and that's where we'd catch these fish. Uh, one time my dad and I went fishing and the current was so fast we, he couldn't anchor. But dad would always anchor. We would drift down the river, just drifting down the river, drifting down the river, just pitching cane poles up close to the bank. We were just catching fish, catching fish. That stuck to me. That was probably the most meaningful fishing that has really defined the way I fish now. You never see me anchoring. I'm always drifting and trolling. I'm always moving. So the first thing in becoming a good fisherman is you have to move a lot. And for me, the best way to move around is just to get off the bank. Now, my brother's a bank-bound fisherman, but gosh, that guy, I mean, he's really a better fisherman than I am. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. But he, even his fishing from the bank, he doesn't stay in one spot too long. He will fish at one spot and then get into the car, get in the truck and zoom to another part of the lake or the river and fish there. And then zoom another, he's just always moving. One of the things I see people when I go to the boat dock, you'll see people, they got their one spot that they really like and they'll put their bait in that one spot and then that's just, the fish don't know that's your one favorite spot. They're either spawning, eating, or resting, or, or trying not to get eaten. Once you understand that, you realize, oh, the fish aren't gonna be right here just because I show up right here. But there is one thing you can do. If you're really fishing every day, the best thing you can do is start chumming. Look up British match fishing. They have had a great influence on the floats that I have. You've seen the floats that I have on Amazon and my website and on eBay. Popular thing to do is to chum catfish spots. Well, if you're a bank bound fisherman, the best thing you can possibly do is chum. You're gonna put scent and food off into the water that's gonna draw fish in. You can literally bait up holes and literally draw fish in. If you get in your boat and you go down to the lake and you start looking at these lake houses, you can see that some of these lake houses have fish feeders on them. And they'll either put dog food or cat food or maybe even catfish feed or some sort of feed in there. And at certain times of day, that thing will go off. And it gets to a point to where they don't even have to turn the machine on. It's Pavlov's dog. Pavlov, the famous Russian scientist, found that he could actually trigger a dog to wet his mouth. You feed the dog, you ring the bell, feed the dog. Read the bell, feed the dog. Sooner or later, all you have to do is ring the bell and the dog starts salivating. You don't have to actually feed him. You're doing the same thing with the fish. If you're going fishing every day and you have a bucket of chum and every day you throwing that chum out before you start fishing and then you start fishing and your fish are gonna generally hold in that area. That's something I never see anybody doing around. Yet, if you look at the way British fishermen fish, that's the way they do it. Chum is easy to make. Watch my video on how to make uh, chum or catfish chum or whatever. Uh, my black so that's how I found out about these black soldier flies was from chumming. I chum, 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 and left the chum open for a couple of weeks and all these maggots were in it. And then I remember from my gardening days, oh, this is a black soldier fly larva. I can fish with these. They're not a pest. You can buy fish meal. That's like a popular fertilizer. You could use that and make it up into like little balls and just throw some of those balls out. Yeah, yeah this is it. Yeah, Minnesota Minnesota brand quality, yeah, quality lure ingredients. They, you know, they're for trappers and hunters and things like that. 
This stuff reached a high heaven. I keep it on the boat. I don't even know where the top is anymore. That's, that's from Minnesota Trapping Supply. You know how you make chicken and dumplings down here? Well, just imagine making some sort of chicken and dumplings, except you're using this, this stinky oil with the flour as opposed to some cooking oil. Make those dumplings up. You can put them in a bag. And then when you go fishing, you, instead of flatten them out and rolling them and cutting them like we do down here, you just roll them up into some little balls, right? Doesn't have to be perfectly shaped. And every time you go fishing, take, you know, four or five of those balls and just throw them out there. Over time, you'll begin to call in fish to where you're fishing, triggering the fish to start feeding. Read everything you possibly can about any kind of fishing. I don't care what it is. Philosophy Fridays, you know, um, you know, I'm going to do those not every Friday, not even every other Friday maybe. I'm probably going to do Philosophy Fridays just sort of as I'm feeling like doing it. I'm not in a sort of philosophizing mode right now. There are seasons in life where I will intensely philosophize and think and write and like for instance the catfisher's prayer book up on Amazon I will had been writing a lots of poems like that off and on for years but that summer I just went crazy I, I just started writing a whole lot and probably whatever amount of poems I had I probably doubled now I'm more of in a teaching mode I'm going to take all these things that I've learned in terms of fishing and I'm wanting to begin to document that more intensely and, and get it in, in. And I wanted to write books, but books are just so static. Once I write it, it's just there and you have to go back and redo stuff. And I need a better platform for that and a much better platform than what YouTube can provide. So that's why we're doing things on Teachable. I just ordered the parts for the new build for the motor. That'll be on there. And then someone wanted to know about the gas tank conversion. I'll probably, I'll, I'm definitely gonna make that part of the build for free. And that'll be up on Teachable when it gets done. So forgetting a lot of questions people ask. Oh yeah, rod and reel. Why don't I fish with rod and reel? I think uh, Patrick Smith, I think he's been commenting. I, I hate rod and reel fishing. I, I hate it. I don't cast. I remember one time I went down to the river, just fishing from the bank. Uh, oh, what was I fishing with? I can't remember, but I timed myself. How much time is the bait actually in the water? And so I, I cast it out, and once that bait hits the water, and I, I started counting as I was stripping it in, and I added up the seconds from the time the bait actually hit the water to the time I took the bait out of the water. Then I kept on count, and I kept counting as I started getting getting line back and starting I had to do some false cast to get the line out and like that uh, the, the double haul I was double hauling out half the time was just casting right now this thing about this when the bait hits the water the bait's not in the strike zone it has to sink down as you're retrieving it and stuff and then there comes a point to where it's starting to rise back up out of the water as it's getting closer to you the bait was only in the strike zone maybe seven or eight seconds out of the entire 30 second time frame and I thought, that was lame. I'm never going to catch anything. And at that time, I wasn't catching anything. So it's like, what's the point? What's the point in casting when two-thirds to three-quarters of your time is spent, with, if the bait is spent out of the strike zone? That brought me back to the time that I was fishing with my dad and we were drifting down the river. I said, well, wait a minute. If I were just drifting or trolling, the bait would be in the water all the time other than when I'm gonna have to check my baits or I actually catch something say I'm gonna pull a drift and it takes me an hour to pull this particular drift the baits gonna be in the water like 50 minutes out of that time frame well I'm what are my chances of actually catching fish <laughs> it just went up just like exponentially <laughs> that's why I don't cast it's just a waste of energy waste of time I don't know why people do it all I know why people do it because that's what the competitions require when you look at fishing competition, most any competition that allows trolling and drifting, that's the primary uh, thing that people are doing. I think this lady across the way here thinks I'm absolutely crazy. I'm just talking to this. I'm just talking to the air. I'm saying you have to get the bait in front of enough fish's face to trigger a bite. And for me, trolling and drifting does that most effectively. Even in shallow water. Another thing was just financially, I just couldn't afford four 
cat max reels and, and four rods to do this and I'm gonna then I gotta buy rods to catch bait with and I got just highly specialized gear I just said there's no way I could afford it I'm catching way more fish with a hand line and it's like a fraction of the cost for instance my hand lines that I sell the wooden ones, the custom ones that I made, is they spent $50 on one of those. That's like half the cost of a decent reel, like an Abu Garcia uh, 6500 C3 or something. And I think the reason I like fly fishing is because it's just hand line fishing with the assistance of a pole. The thing is, is everything that you see me doing can be done on a rod and reel. It, the fish don't know that you're fishing with a rod and reel or a hand line or a cane pole or a fly rod or a saltwater rod or a boat rod. They don't know. They don't know. All they know is there's just some bait there for them to eat. The rest is up to you. That's why I do what I do, because it works. If I built a new rod, you know what I would do? But I would buy a salmon steelhead rod, or I would buy a spay rod blank, or a switch rod blank. I would configure it like a fly rod, only I'd have a super long handle so I can do it two-handed, right? And I would put the reel seat toward the bottom, but have probably about that much of a handle left over so that I can put that other handle down here and use a fly reel or a spinning reel. Now the spinning reels, my favorite spinning reel is a double action reel, bait feeder reels where you have a drag on the bottom and a drag on the top, both of them, so that you can flip the bail and I can just strip out line without actually opening the bail. It works just, it makes it, it makes, it's a pretty complicated mechanism but it makes the reel function exactly the way you would with a fly reel. But I would most likely just put a fly reel on there and just do all my trolling and stuff like I have with my lead core line. And I'd almost build two rods. I'd build one in a five weight just for the bluegill and stuff. And then I'd build something like a 10 weight for the catfish. But there you go, specialized equipment, you know. Whereas now I have the one hand line reel that I take with me and all I gotta do is change out the leader. If I wanna catch bait, you put on a bait leader. I want to catch some fillet sized fish because when I fish, it's always for eating. I'm going to put a 20 pound line on there for, 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 for fillet sized fish. If I ever get the itch to really go target some trophy class fish, I would just change up the whole rig and I would go, I'd use a very different setup. I'd be using like two and 300 pound test line as you've seen me, heard me talk about all the time.